I'm in the marketing team at FPU's Labs. Today, I'd like to present Haley Levy, who is an associate at BDT Attorneys in the Commercial Law and Tax Division. Haley's session is titled, The Poppy Act, Don't Get Caught by a Curveball. So, I'd like to hand over to you, Haley. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure for us to be part of FPU's Labs Data Security Conference. Um, as Cindy said, I, my name is Haley, and I'm an associate in the commercial department of BDT Attorneys a law firm which is based in Pretoria, South Africa, and we are absolutely thrilled to be partnering with APU Slabs in providing legal tech solutions in the data privacy field, specifically with our Poppy Pack solution. Um, and if you guys would like to find out more information regarding the Poppy Pack, please visit um, www.poppypack.co.za. So, as I said, today I'm going to be sharing a little bit of insights on South Africa's data protection law, which is called the Protection of Personal Information Act, or better known as the Poppy Act or Poppia. So, let's dive in, should we? What is the Poppy Act? Um, the Poppy Act governs the processing of personal information with the central aim of upholding the right of privacy of persons, as provided for in South Africa's constitution. How the Poppy Act does this is that it places specific obligations on persons who request, collect, store, destroy, or otherwise use personal information relating to another person in order to prevent and protect such person from suffering potential damage or harm. Furthermore, and very importantly, remedies are catered for in the event um, of breach of a person's personal information, or if any of the conditions for lawful processing um, are imposed by the Poppy Act. So when will the Poppy Act commence? <laughs> Since being signed into law in 2013, the most popular question on everyone's lips has been, when is it going to commence? Now, although certain limited sections of the Poppy Act have already come into operation, including the establishment of a regulator and the publication of regulations, these limited sections do not relate to the actual enforcement of the Poppy Act which would require organizations and persons to comply with its provisions and result in penalties being issued in the event of non-compliance. Why the delay and what has been happening since 2013? The information regulator has continuously stated since her appointment on the 1st of December 2016 that the Poppy Act will not commence until such time that her office is equipped to deal with the influx of complaints and investigations that are actually expected. Earlier this year, the information regulator did request the president to announce the commencement date as 1 April. However, with the outbreak of COVID-19 in South Africa and the commencement of a nationwide lockdown from the 27th of March, one can forgive the president's focus being shifted elsewhere. However, this does not mean that the pressure has halted as COVID-19 in its own right has actually forced a change in the way business is done and has presented more risks for entities actually processing personal data during this time. And at the same time, it's also effectively increased the amount of processing, specifically from a health information perspective. Having this in mind, and also considering that the current information regulators term is actually set to end on the 1st of December, 2021, you would think that now is as good as time as any that the Poppy Act would commence. So the good news, well, whichever way you look at it, is that this past Monday on the 22nd of June, the presidency has finally given the green light for the commencement dates. President Ramaphosa has announced that the commencement date for the Poppy Act will be 1 July 2020. What this effectively means is that those remaining sections requiring compliance with the conditions for lawful processing and also providing for penalties will commence from 1 July 2020. Now, on this note, I'm going to hand over to Cindy, who's going to do a very quick poll. Cindy, over to you. Thank you, Hayley. Today's poll question you will see on your screen. Is your business ready to comply with the Poppy Act? Yes, we've been preparing for months. Not fully. We have work to do. We need help ASAP. Okay, so 58% say that, yes, we've been preparing for months. 42% say not fully, we have work to do. Uh, so, Heidi, over to you. 
Goodness, well, that's kind of good news then that people or businesses have actually been putting the groundwork in. Um, I think from my side, hopefully things start taking a turn. All right, so the good news is that although the commencement date is 1 July 2020, businesses and persons needing to comply will be forwarded a 12 months grace period effectively up until 1 July 2021, when the Act will be fully effective and persons can be reported, investigated and penalised. So, I stress that you should not be waiting to use the grace period to try and comply last minute. Be proactive now. Use COVID-19 as a wake-up call to ensure that you're fully equipped to deal with any risks and build a poppy compliance culture in your organisation. Although the Poppy Act is not yet effective, the information regulator is receiving complaints and you do not want to be on her radar right from the get-go. So from a penalties perspective, um, what the Poppy actually provides for is a maximum penalty of 10 million rand fine. Importantly is that this is per an infringement, which can become quite costly if your organization continues to claim the spotlight for the wrong reasons. Also is a 10 years imprisonment, or effectively both a fine or imprisonment. Now, these penalties are separate from any potential devastating reputational damage that your business may suffer due to complaints being lodged with information regulator. Lastly, nothing prevents an aggrieved party from instituting court action to obtain appropriate relief in the event of non-compliance. Now, understand your obligations in terms of the Poppy Act. It is obviously recommended that you have a basic understanding of the terminology, as well as the key role players that that provides for. The first one is personal information. Personal information is any type of information that can identify or relates to a person, whether it be their phone number, their contact number, their name. It's a very wide definition. The second important definition is processing. When we speak about processing, we're referring to any form of activity, whether it's manual or electronically, in terms of which you actually go about using that personal information. The very fact that you are storing information that you might not know about could effectively mean that you're processing it if you look at that definition. So from a key role, <laughs> key role player perspective, what we have is the data subject. Now, the data subject is the person to whom the personal information relates. In terms of the Poppy Act, the data subject can either be a natural person, meaning a human being, or a juristic person, such as a company. What this means is that both juristic and natural persons are protected by the Act, which is unlike the European General Data Protection Regulation, better known as the GDPR, considered the golden standard for data protection laws which only affords protection to humans. The second key role player that is important is a responsible party. Now they're known under the GDPR as the data controller. This is the person who determines the purpose for processing the personal information of a data subject. In other words, this is you as the business owner who collects the personal data from the data subject, being the customer or the client, and then processes it in order to provide that customer with services or products. The operator, who is known as the data processor under the GDPR, is a third person who may be contracted by the responsible party to assist in the responsible party with processing information. For example, an HR service provider that assists a business to process data of its employees, or an IT company that is contracted to assist in storing data in the cloud. Now, the governance of the relationship between the responsible party and the operator is vital from a Poppy Act perspective. The reason being is that unlike the GDPR, where there is joint liability shared by these two parties, under the Poppy Act, it is only the responsible party who remains accountable to the information regulator, as well as the data subject, in the event of there being non-compliance or a breach of personal information. Therefore, any contract concluded, for example, a service level agreement between the responsible party and the operator should clearly cater for the processing duties of the operator. 
and provide for the relevant indemnities in the event that either party actually exceeds their authority. Or if there is a breach, what the incident reporting stra strategy is going to be. Effectively, by doing this, the responsible party will still be accountable if the pork or hits the fan, but it safeguards itself to an extent by having a right of recourse against the operator in terms of the contract concluded. Now, who is the watchdog of Poppy? This is the information regulator who I mentioned earlier. Much like the Regulatory Data Protection Authority, CNAL in France, and the Information Commissioner's Office in the UK. Now, she has been appointed, her name is Advocate Pansy in Lakula, and she's assisted by her office bearers. And she has extensive powers to investigate complaints lodged, and she can also, at the same time, issue fines. Furthermore, the Information Regulator is tasked with overseeing that organizations understand what the Poppy Act is, provide assistance and guidance where necessary, and she can actually publish codes of conduct that will be applicable to the processing of data in specific sectors, for example, the health sector. Now, the information regulator has actually been quite vocal during the management of COVID-19. She published guidelines on the 3rd of April to guide organizations in the processing of data during weathering of the pandemic and ensuring that the right to privacy always is upheld albeit if it is limited in certain circumstances. Now, a role not all business processing data in South Africa are aware of is the role of the information officer. The information officer is essentially the face of the responsible party when it comes to complying with the Poppy Act. And every business or organization has one, whether someone is formally appointed or not. The default position is that it is the CEO of a business or organization who is the information officer in the absence of a formal appointment. Take note that information officers will need to be registered with the information regulator once the Poppy Act is fully effective. And the processing for registration is expected any time after the commencement date when it is anticipated that the information regulator will publish guidelines regarding same as well as the expected qualifications of the information officer and the term to hold office. Now, we highly recommend that you do not wait for the registration to become compulsory, but rather appoint someone to the role now who can drive the business's compliance culture um, shift immediately. In this regard, the duties of the information officer include monitoring and encourage compliance by the business with the Poppy Act, working with the regulator, dealing with requests, and also creating a practical and logical compliance framework to enable the business to comply with ease and prevent breaches. So, sadly, there is still a misconception that the Poppy Act only applies to big business, and that what it boils down to is that this is really not the case. If you are a small, medium or large business, private or public, that collects and uses personal data of your customers to provide them with services or products, on this basis alone, you are going to need to comply with the Act. This being said, any approach adopted by a business to comply will be centered on complying with the eight conditions for lawful processing of data, as set out in the Poppy Act. These briefly are accountability. The responsible party takes full responsibility for how a data subject's personal information is processed. And from this perspective, it is vital to understand that accountability is not just about answering to the regulator, but also answering to the data subject because it is their information. The second condition is processing limitation. The processing of personal information is limited to the consent of the data subject or allowed by law. What this means is that the business can only process the personal information of their customers if they have the consent or if the law requires processing to take place. The third specification, uh, the third condition, beg your pardon, is purpose specification. Due to the responsible party being limited, to the confines of the consent granted, 
The purpose for why personal information is required must be identified. An example of this is a doctor requires consent of his patient, being a data subject, in order to treat such patient. This would entail having access to the patient's health information. Therefore, the purpose of processing in this instance is to provide such patient with medical treatment. Now, from the context of being allowed to process data because the law tells, I, tells me I have to, an example of this would be South Africa's Disaster Management Act regulations that have been published during COVID-19 and which have required businesses or organizations to process certain health information to manage the spread of the virus and which information such business may not be accustomed to collecting or processing in the first instance. The fourth requirement is further processing limitation. There are restrictions on the further distribution of personal information to anyone else or to use the personal information for any other purpose. What this means is that if you want to use the data for any other purpose, you will need the further consent of the data subject because it strays from the original purpose that the consent was granted for. For example, the doctor in the above instance decides to disclose his patient list to his wife who runs a travel agency so that she can offer special holiday deals to patients needing recuperation. Disclosing the information for this purpose would be incompatible, obviously, with the purpose for which it was originally obtained, unless the patient being the data subject has consented to such further processing. Now, information quality, it goes without saying, being the fifth condition, that you cannot provide services to your clients if you have inadequate and outdated information. Therefore, there is an obligation for business to ensure that the personal information remains correct and up to date. The sixth condition, openness. This can be linked to the eighth condition being data subject participation. And what it boils down to is that the responsible party must inform the information regulator and the data subject in the event of a breach of the data subject's personal information. What personal information you have on such data subject and how and where it is stored. At the end of the day, responsible parties must realize that although they have the information of the data subject, it still belongs to that person, and therefore they should treat it with the utmost respect. The last condition is security safeguards. Physical and digi digital security measures to protect the personal information must be put in place. Information security is important not only because it is itself a legal requirement, but also because it can support good data governance and helps you demonstrate your compliance with other aspects of the Act. So, here we find ourselves in this year. Um, I don't think anyone expected us to be where we are. Um, COVID-19 has been interesting. However, Although COVID-19 has had an impact on the way business may be traditionally being done prior to its outbreak, it has also increased data processing risks. Nevertheless, nevertheless once um, COVID-19 has weathered its way, the Poppy Act is still going to need to be complied with. That being said, COVID-19 has essentially provided businesses with an opportunity to deal with processing risks if they have not done so already. To ensure that any future curveball that comes around the corner can be knocked out the park. And specifically now, given the fact that the commencement date was announced on Monday. Therefore, what we are saying, that there are essentially, in our opinion, five steps that any business, whether large or small, public or private, can use as a foundation for commencing their Poppy Act compliance journey, or use as a fallback outline approach. Now, it's very important to realize that by no means are the five steps a quick fix. Ensuring compliance takes time, it is not a tick box exercise, and it requires a culture shift within the organization. Ultimately, the five steps to comply with the Poppy Act and any global data protection legislation for that matter, boils down to developing a compliance management framework to provide structure for the implementation process. Therefore, step one, 
identify. Arguably, any successful management framework is based on commitment, leadership, and accountability from executive management. The tone at the top must support compliance. Step two, an audit, or better known as a compliance impact assessment. An audit of how your business currently processes personal information should be done and is recommended. You cannot build a workable compliance framework without knowing and mapping what your business has on the table. In other words, where and how is your data requested, used, stored, and secured? And what policies do you have in place governing this? The third step, amendment. Once you know what you have, you can go about amending what you don't or what you need to put in place and cover those loopholes. Your systems might be semi-compliant in other words, and therefore you can ensure that any loopholes are closed. An example of this um, is your website privacy policy and terms and condition documents that need to be regularly checked to ensure that they remain valid and lawful and up to date. The fourth step is supplement. So what hasn't your business thought about, which may be a risk? An example of this is that you may be currently processing data that you have never done before to comply with COVID-19 legislation or dealing with new risks as a result thereof. An example, employees working remotely and once returned to work, the business having to process their health information or clients visiting the business. Lastly, step five is implementation and we can add monitoring as well. You can talk all day, but if you're not implementing a poppy compliance plan to suit your business, it will mean nothing. And you are indirectly telling the regulator that you know you need to comply, but you have actually failed to do so. All right, so I think that we are a bit pressed for time now, but the slides will be shared after the event. And where you can have a look at our very handy table comparing the GDPR and the Poppy Act, especially if you are an organization who processes data globally um, and in South Africa and Europe with regards to this table. Um, all right, Cindy, I'm happy to answer one or two questions if there's still time. Otherwise, we will address same offline. And please remember, if your business needs any Poppy Act compliance or assistance, have a look at our website, www.poppyact.co.za, um, or contact us directly at VDT. Thank you very much. Cindy, over to you. Thank you, Hayley. We have a question that came through. Can an employer request specific information on the health status of an employee in the context of COVID? and also force an employee to undergo testing for COVID-19. Thank you for the question, Cindy. Um, well, I, yes, the answer is yes. The employer is obliged to maintain a safe and hazardous free working environment. Um, this is in terms of South African legislation being the Occupational Health and Safety Act, read together with the Employment Equity Act. Um, and if an employee's health status may endanger other employees, they can be forced um, to release health information. However, this being said, the disclosed information should not be used to unfairly discriminate against any employee. Um, and to answer the second part of the question, therefore, given that we have these, this legislation in place to protect um, citizens, the employer can actually force workers to go um, for testing for the virus. So hopefully that answers it. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you to everyone that asked questions. We will deal with them offline. Hayley, thank you very much for sharing the importance of Poppy compliance with us. Thank you to everybody for joining the session.